What's up guys, video 3. Um, we're going to talk about creating ground planes and other hard to recreate uh, objects in Nuke. And uh, making a rough mesh uh, based on the footage itself. We're going to recre of a recreate a point cloud in Nuke. So we're going to export the scene. as a nuke script we're going to open nuke and there we are nuke now we can just uh, drag and drop the nuke script into nuke and we get four nodes First of all, the ship fixed container one 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 or zero 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 one. That is the camera. Please always um, rename it to camera. If other people are going to use your nuke script, um, it's really really easy for them to just have a camera nude a uh, uh, node. Um, the other one, the uh, I deleted. It's not necessary. The uh, scene and the locators aren't really necessary as well. It's easy to have as, as, uh, as a reference, but I didn't really use them because we are going to recreate the point cloud in Nuke itself, and it's way, way clearer. It's a beautiful point cloud in Nuke. So we're going to load in the footage. Now, the really bad thing of Nuke is or at least at the machines we have I noticed that it doesn't really it, it's not that happy with 4k footage let, let's put it that way so if you can't really scroll through it that easily even if you have nothing at all uh, uh, compositing wise now we have the footage, we have the camera we make a point cloud generator now the scene and the locators we're not going to use them the point cloud, cloud camera uh, camera or uh, jeez point cloud generator we hook the camera in we hook the source in and into the point cloud generator we are going to analyze the sequence now we don't have a mask so we don't need to touch it just analyze the sequence it will take a couple of minutes it's nuke is really slow in this it takes a really really long time now we analyze the sequence and we are now going to track points now what I did here is I uh, track it with the default values um, I would suggest because I think in a couple of minutes we are going to retrack it please put the point uh, separation to 1 or close to one that's most of the time what you need um, and there's no need to track the points two times because I already know the point separation on one will generate a better point cloud now what you see here it's done tracking we have the point cloud there are a l couple of red dots that has to do with the uh, angle and the density threshold I think it's the angle threshold we're going to lower it so we don't have it we're going to use it uh, to generate the blob mesh in a minute now as you can see it's still a little bit rough but it's really really cool now as you can see we're going to lower the point separation and track again most of the time just just put it to one or lower them one straight away it will save you a lot of time because track of uh, tracking it will take a couple of minutes as you can see it's a way higher density uh, the points are as you expect less separated from each other you can see all the containers individually you can see the crane uh, filers looks pretty good now 
we have now the point cloud uh, point cloud generator. We're going to add a poison mesh. What the poison mesh does is really it takes the uh, data from the point cloud generator and converts it into uh, into a yeah into a mesh. Now as you can see, it was just one huge blob that is because of all the lines that are shooting out. As you can see the ship and the cranes are really 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 small in compared to everything that is tracked. Uh, so we're going to increase the angle threshold um, to just about the size of the ship. So you just have the ship, the cranes a bit and that's about it. The rest won't be tracked. A little bit less and that's about right now if we open up the poison mesh again it takes a little bit of time to calculate and now you can see it's a better mesh now if you're using a different kind of shot uh, please keep in mind the poison mesh will always close itself so uh, that means now it's uh, it's really good this is one of the best results I have with the poison mesh but if you are using um, another shot it might be possible for the poison mesh that you are actually inside of it the camera is inside of it so you need to clean it up in um, need to clean it up in Maya and again this is just really for the rough, rough details, for the global layout of the scene, how it was. Um, if you want to make the robot walk on top of the containers on the ship, you're not really going to use it like this. You can better use it uh, with the next workflow method we're going to talk about in the uh, next video. You can now export it as an FBX file. FBX and execute the FBX file when it's done you can just import it into Maya and you can um, take a look if it's all correctly tracked if the camera is imported correctly if everything looks good As you can see, it's now imported into Maya. When we move to the camera and set the uh, length to the correct size, we can scroll through it and we can more or less, <laughs> more or less, see the containers and the ship and the cranes. As I said, it's really rough. It's used for globally laying out the scene. You can't animate the robot on top of it, uh, really. It's too too weird, too abstract to animate anything on top of. It's more for giving the view where all the objects are, how far apart they are for, for the 3D guys. and just save the scene and we're done.